In part two of lecture five, we will discuss binding and binding time. Binding refers to the association of a particular property or attribute to a particular feature or entity of a programming language. This could include binding a data type or memory address to a variable, or an operation to a symbol in the language. There are different types of bindings that can occur in a program. Binding time is when in the lifetime of a program or of a language when that binding will take place. We are going to look at them now. One possible binding time is language design time. When we are putting together the specifications of a language, we bind some properties to different aspects of the language. One example of this is binding an operation to a particular operator symbol. This would include binding the subtraction operation to the dash or minus sign. Similarly, Fortran bound default data types to variables at language design time. Language implementation time addresses what goes on when the compiler or interpreter is being implemented. Designing the compiler so that it uses a particular representation for floating point values would be an example of this. Compile time obviously refers to when the program is actually being translated. In most modern languages that use static data typing, we would use compile time to bind the data type to a particular variable. Such languages include C and C++. Load time is when the program is loaded into memory by the operating system. Static variables in C, C++, and several other languages will be bound to their memory addresses at load time. Non-static variables in Pascal, C, and C++ would be bound to their addresses at runtime. Since these variables will be allocated when entering a procedure and deallocated when leaving it, the only logical time for such a binding is at runtime. Bindings can be static or dynamic. A static binding takes place before runtime and will not change during program execution, hence the name. On the other hand, dynamic binding occurs when a binding either occurs during runtime or can change then. When we are looking to bind a data type to a variable, there are two main questions that we need to answer. How is the type specified and when does the binding occur? There are two choices for how to specify the binding. It can be done statically or dynamically. This is significant and not just because of when the binding occurs. Static type binding is for the life of the program's execution, while dynamic type binding can change and usually will change. Dynamic binding occurs when the variable is assigned a value of a particular data type, but there are two possibilities for how the binding can will be accomplished. It can be done explicitly or implicitly. Explicit declarations are what we see in C, C++, and Java. There is a formal declaration that appears in the program, either appearing as the variable is first assigned value, or in a separate statement that is either at the top of the procedure or somewhere before it is first used. Implicit declarations use a default mechanism. The data type is determined by some association between the variable's name and its type. For example, in Fortran, variables beginning with the letters i, j, k, l, m, and n are integers, unless they are declared explicitly, while variables whose name begin with other letters are real, unless declared explicitly. Similarly, the special character in front of a variable's name in Perl determines if it is a scalar, an array, or a hash, or associative array. Implicit declarations carry the benefit of being more writable, but they can lead to reliability problems if not used properly and if not properly tested. 
Type inference is a way of determining the type for a variable or expression based on other values from which it is assigned or from other values with which it will be used. In C sharp, a variable can be declared using the reserved word var and then including an initial value. This value is used to infer the type of the variable. Although this may seem a lot like how dynamically typed variables have their initial data type set, this is different. These variables in C sharp are statically typed. Whatever type is inferred by the initial value is the data type that they are stuck with through the life of the program. Type inference is also used in more recent versions of Visual Basic and in ML, Haskell, and F sharp. While ML uses static typing, it can infer data type if the interpretation of type is unambiguous. In the example shown here, we see in the original definition that the two parameters, length and width, are both integers, as is the result area. But I don't have to write it this way. I can omit the type of both parameters if area's type is declared as integer. I can leave out the type for area and width if length's type is integer. And I can leave out the type for area and length if width's type is integer. But I can't leave out all three types because I would not have anything to use when I try to infer their data types. Dynamic type binding appears in several modern programming languages, including JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and PHP. We specify the type of a variable through an assignment statement. The variable takes on the type of the value assigned to it. In the example shown here, we see that we can set JavaScript as a real value or as an array. This gives our programs in a language like this great flexibility, but it comes at a high price. Dynamic type checking slows down the execution of the program. And because dynamic type binding makes it difficult to write a compiler as opposed to an interpreter, the use of interpreters slow down the execution as well. Lastly, it also makes it more difficult to find type-related errors.